right, so I thought I'd do a quick mail day video. Sort of an unusual mix of cards. None of uh, none of the cards are Topps cards. Uh, this is a 1999 Pacific Revolution card, and I ended up putting together the entire Braves team set, which was just seven cards. It's a small, small set. Uh, originally, I had uh, this card. This was the first card I saw from this set. This is Chipper Jones, and I actually presumed it was a uh, insert because it's uh, it's got this really attractive kind of foil uh, front with um, uh, some glitter and, and refracting about it and and it's uh, some etching and uh, it's re just a really really handsome design I, I didn't imagine it was it was part of a base set but actually there were as I said seven cards in this set so I picked them up and you know they seem to be the stars on the team I, I guess the, uh, there's a pretty notable omission of Tom Glavin but uh, I, perhaps that's because they wanted to include Kevin McClinchy's rookie card. I, I, I honestly have no recollection of Kevin pitching for the Braves, but uh, I suppose this was meant to be a premium set of the stars and the rookies. And you can see in the lower left, there's like a little diamond, red diamond that says rookie. So I presume it's his rookie card. Certainly would have liked to have seen uh, Tom Glavin this set, but it's also nice to see Javi Lopez and Brian Jordan, who were you know fixtures on the team uh, for for a time. Uh, Jordan even played for the, uh, the Falcons briefly. So neat, neat set from 1999. The rest of the cards are significantly older. This is 1961 post serial, and you can see it's hand cut. This was um, cut from a uh, post serial box, and uh, this is Red Shandings, who was a very significant. Uh, player for the Braves in the late 50s, early 60s, albeit a, a very brief um, stint with the Braves. And you can see on the back of this card, it, it mentions that he's traded back to St. Louis. But he made a significant difference. Uh, he was uh, sidelined, unfortunately, during most of the 59 season when he got sick with tuberculosis. But he was a, a integral figure in the 1957 World Series champion team and on the World Series runners-up in 58. Many thought he was kind of the missing piece to a puzzle that included, you know, Warren Spahn and Eddie Matthews and Hank Aaron. Speaking of Eddie Matthews, this is a 1954 Red Man tobacco card. And uh, this is one I've been looking out for for a while. This one's graded a five, and I, and I wonder about that. I, I think it's um, a really nice card, very attractive card in person. I think the, the corners are a touch more rounded than, than I'm accustomed to for fives. Uh, but I guess that kind of speaks to the um, how uh, sharp and vivid the rest of the, the card is, that it would still earn a grade of five. But uh, this was this has proved to be the one of the more difficult cards uh, to pick up in this set. And I speak of the set kind of more broadly. It's, it's actually a set that was available from 1952 to 1955, this team set. And it was just All-Stars, and I've mentioned this before, so I won't drag you through that explanation again. But with the acquisition of Eddie Matthews, there's really just one other player to pick up, Sid Gordon, and I did purchase it in its honest way. And uh, I've even begun to pick up some of the um, uh, players that, that appear in uh, multiple sets, like Del Crandall and Johnny Logan. You see these uh, these cards with the yellow outline. That's that's what that represents. But So this is the... the set as I see it, um, I, I wanted to pick up each of the unique players, and uh, as I said, say Gordon's on his way, so um, I consider this set to be relatively complete, uh, but uh, I do hope to pick up the, the Spawns and the, the Missing Pathco that I don't have. As a matter of fact, I don't have any of the cards from 1955, and I don't, you know, until, until these um, Logan and, and Crandall cards pick up, so uh, neat, neat set. Uh, really encourage you to explore picking them up. And I think they're a very good value for uh, the expense. Um, last card I wanted to share was this T205. Um, these are cards that were released in the same era with the, the T206 cards. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, 1911. Uh, this is with the Boston Rustlers. And this, I think, was in a uh, honest long-cut tobacco uh, pouch. Uh, I, I say that because I, I see some significant staining on the back of the card and, and some on the front too. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is a really excellent example 
of this car. Um, it's well centered. There's um, there's not a lot of white around the edges or borders, which can happen in this car. If there is, um, you know, one, you know, kind of uh, pitfall to this card is that the um, the gold border has lost a lot of the uh, uh, the gold glittery shine to it. And uh, even though it's unblemished with white, it's uh, it's much uh, duller in appearance to the uh, other card I have from this set, which you can see here. This is Fred Beck on the left. And I've just kind of cropped these photos from um, uh, their graded cards and uh, dropped them on this checklist. So it's still quite a few cards to pick up. This is, this is going to be a very difficult set to complete, uh, principally because of the expense, but, uh, but also because they're just um, often in, in such bad condition, they're not uh, as desirable uh, for me to pick up. But in any event, if you look at this card, I think the registration is outstanding for these cards. They tend to be uh, often very blurry because the, um, the plates weren't aligned very well, and there's usually at least one or two of the plates that just don't sync up, and uh, and that really detracts from, from the quality of the card, I think. So I, often I've, I've picked up lower grades. You know, I've, I've just picked up the three uh, here, and I guess the other one was, what, a three and a half uh, from SGC. Uh, but I'm willing to do that if the registration is super, super sharp. And, I, and I'll even endure some wrinkles uh, just for a more clear registration to the to picture. I want to, I want to, it's a close-up of, of their face. I want to see their face pretty distinctly when I pick up these cards, so. That's all I have, just a, a handful of cards, but uh, a little unusual in that there, there are no tops cards. Probably the only mail day I've ever done without a tops card. So I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you.